Hey there and welcome to the Uke Stuff channel and to this tutorial video of how to work with the play-alongs, the ukulele play-alongs of Memories by Maroon 5. I wanted to also mention that because these videos are used in schools, that this song may not be appropriate for use in a school setting. The lyrics keep coming back to the idea that the drinks bring back all the memories, which may not be appropriate for school. So make sure that the song is appropriate for the situation that you would use it in. Now just a couple things before we begin. First of all, this video will cover the chords you need to play on GCEA. It will cover the chords you need to play on DGBE, which is baritone ukulele. We will talk about the picking patterns, not really strumming this time, but the picking patterns for this song. And I always want to make it clear that what you get here are suggestions. This is not dogmatic in any sense. If you want to play something else, go ahead and do it. It's up to you. So seriously, this is not the right answer. This is a answer. And again, part of the reason why I started making these videos, and I've been doing it since the summer of 2019, was that I get these comments. Uh, the number one comment is strumming pattern. That's it. Um, just says strumming pattern. And people want a strumming pattern and people are never quite happy with the answer that you give um, in that context and then the other one is when you actually do give a strumming pattern you get people that tell you that you're wrong so this video hopefully helps out with some of that and if you think I'm wrong then you play it the way that you hear it and seriously that's great so you're never going to hear me tell you that this is the only way to do it the other thing is, um, we have a partnership on this channel with ukutabs.com. So if you go to ukutabs.com, you can download the chords that I use for the song. Also, I've transposed the song up. I believe it's a half step because I believe it was originally in the key of B. So I brought it up to the key of C. So it's a little happier to play on ukulele rather than playing with a bunch of bar chords, which you can do, but not for this video. Now let's take a look at the chords that you need for G, C, E, A, soprano, concert, or tenor ukulele. I'll be playing my Martin S1 ukulele, and we'll start off with the C chord. Then you'll have the G chord, then the A minor chord, then the E minor chord, then the F chord, and then you just play the chords you've already played. C, F, and then G. And then you come back, most of the time, back to the C chord. And those are the only chords you need for the song. Now let's take a look at the chords you need for D, G, B, E, baritone ukulele. I'll be playing my mainland cedar and rosewood ukulele. So you have your C chord, your G chord, your A minor, your E minor, and then the only hard chord, which is the F chord. Now, in my videos, I often talk about the F chord, especially on baritone, because on guitar, this is where a lot of people quit. They hit the F chord, they're like, nope, I'm not going to do it. My encouragement to you is to keep doing it. Now, if you're holding your ukulele right, and you're holding it firmly with your right arm, Depending that you're a right-handed player playing a right-handed ukulele or ukulele. Um, if you're holding it there, the real secret with your first finger on the other side is to pull against the strings into the fretboard. Not, and again, I used to teach my students to clamp down, and that's that's the wrong action, it's the wrong tension. So ultimately, you just want to pull against those first two strings at the first fret, and then your thumb can go in not to act as a vice because the most of the pressure is coming from pulling but then just to support and you can add the other two fingers and that's your F chord then your other two chords you've already played you play the C chord back to the F chord and then to the G chord and you find yourself back to C eventually and those are the chords you need for DGBE baritone ukulele now for this next part of the video, I'm going to be talking about the picking, and I, I think it should be picking, although you can try strumming if you want, but I, I hear picking to match sort of what's happening 
with the song and I've written out the tablature for G C E A ukulele. The same finger picking patterns work, so I'll talk about those as we go, but the actual numbers on the frets on the chart aren't going to work. So if you're a baritone player, just bear with the idea and listen to it um, and and just try to apply it to the what you do and I'll actually go back to my baritone and play the progression with you just so that you hear that once. Now, what I'm going to be using is, again, my Martin S1, but what I'm going to be using is a technique from Mike Lynch, again, who passed away a couple of years ago, one of the early pioneers of ukulele and ukulele videos on YouTube and, and building a sort of community of players and also building a relationship with a uh, ukulele brand. He had a very strong relationship with Oscar Schmidt. So um, here's what I would encourage you to do. It requires you to practice using your thumb, your first finger, and your second finger to play. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to, on a C chord, pluck strings 4, which is one closest to you, 2 with your point, um, pointer finger, yep, and then string 1 with your middle finger. But we're going to do that all at the same time plucking like this. Imagine you're playing a harp, maybe. So the two fingers come one way, your thumb comes the other way. Then I play each chord, now in this progression, I play the, the third string, then I play the second string, and then I switch to the next chord. In this case, it's the G chord. Now, just as I plucked strings four, two, and one like this, I'm now going to pluck strings 3, 2, and 1 like that. And then I'm going to pluck it again on the fourth beat of the pattern. And then I'm going to switch to the next chord, which happens to be A minor. So I'm going to pluck 4, 3, 2, 1. Then 3, 2, switch to the E minor chord, pluck 1, 2, 3, and then pluck again. Switch to the F chord, pluck again, 4, 2, 1. 3, 2, back to the C chord, plucking 1, 2, 3. I'm kind of overemphasizing my right hand right now. Then back to the F chord, same thing, pluck 4, 2, 1. 3, 2, then G chord, plucking 3, 2, 1. And then you're going to be back right into that pattern again. So slowly it's going to go like this, starting with the C chord. 1 and 2 and 3 and four and now if you haven't done anything like that before that's gonna take a while uh, there's a little gear icon I think it's over here on the screen but I can't always remember whether the video flips itself or whatever so it should be kind of over here but there's a little gear icon on YouTube and you can hit that gear icon and you can slow this video down to make that happen again so again the progression is four to one three two then change to the chord three to one three to one again change the chord to the A minor four to one three two then switching to the E minor three to one then switching to the F chord, 4 2 1, 3 2, C chord, 3 2 1. Switching back to the F chord, 4 2 1, 3 2, then G chord, 3 2 1. And then you'll be right back to what you do again. Let's try that full tempo 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the pattern I would use for the entire song the entire time. If you want to strum, feel free to strum. If you want to play something else, play something else. But that will definitely work with the entire song. Just to prove that it works on baritone too, it sounds a little different with the low D string. One, two, three, four.
So that should be all you need to know to be successful on Memories by Maroon 5. Thanks for watching, and we'll have more content for you in the future.